Hello everybody, my name is Dratnos and welcome to Method's Guide to Full Clearing Horrific Visions with all five Faceless Masks active. This can earn you some awesome rewards, but it's not a trivial task. So let's go over the things you'll want to make sure you have before you attempt this. The level of your legendary cloak is extremely important. Below rank 11, five mask runs are very, very difficult while each rank above 12 makes it far less challenging. The item level of your gear is less important, though it is of course easier with better gear. You also want to have researched enough of the Horrific Visions tech tree to have unlocked the Gift of the Titans ability. You can do Horrific Visions with up to 5 players, and most group compositions can work. Any spec in the game can do a 5 mask full clear solo, though some have an easier time than others, with melee generally being easier than ranged, and with DPS and tanks having an easier time than healers. If you're playing a solo DPS spec, you'll want to play with essences, trinkets, and corruption similar to what you'd wear in a Mythic Plus setting. Solo tanks and healers should go for the most offense-oriented build possible, and should prioritize single-target damage with essences like the Crucible of Flame, and trinkets like the Cyclotronic Blast punch card. Twilight Devastation is a fantastic corruption effect for tanks in particular, though it's good for everyone else too. Enemies have 25% less health if you're playing a solo tank compared to a solo DPS, and 42% less health if you're playing a solo healer. Alright, let's talk about the rewards you can get. Your first 5 mass clear of the week will earn you a shiny 470 item level piece that's guaranteed to be corrupted, and every future run in the same week will decrease that reward by 5 item levels, though it's still guaranteed to be corrupted or azurite. You'll also earn double the corrupted mementos that you'd earn with no masks active, Corrupted mementos are used for upgrading your tech tree further, and once it's finished you can spend them on some cosmetics, or you can buy sockets for your gear at the cost of 25,000 mementos each. A 5 mask clear will earn you 2,300 mementos base, plus a small amount for each enemy you've killed. You can get thousands more by opening the treasure chests in the run, especially those in the hardest areas. There are two treasure chests in most zones, and three in the starting zone. You can also earn up to 425 additional mementos each run by collecting odd crystals. Two of these appear in each zone, and there are a handful of potential spawn locations, some of which can be hard to find if you don't know where to look. To add them to your map, you can download the add-on Handy Notes and the Visions of Nazoth plugin for that add-on. Then, once you're done with the run before you kill Thrall or Illyria, you need to go turn in those odd crystals to an ethereal in the starting zone. Finally, there are some unique cosmetic rewards hidden behind 5 mask runs. Doing a 5 mask full clear of both Stormwind and Orgrimmar will earn you the Black Serpent of Nazoth mount, though you'll also need a rank 15 cloak and a full tech tree. This also unlocks the rank 4 versions of the Essence's Strength of the Warden, Spark of Inspiration, and Unwavering Ward. You can also pick up the title The Faceless One for completing both Orgrimmar and Stormwind 5 mask solo runs. With the rewards and requirements out of the way, let's get to the guide. We'll start with the potions, of which there are five different colors that appear scattered throughout the vision. There are also five effects, one Sanity Drain, one Sanity Restore, and three five-minute buffs that have nasty drawbacks when they expire, though you can drink another potion of the same color to add 15 additional minutes to that buff. Each run, the different colors of potions correspond to different effects, but there are only five different patterns, and you can identify which potion is which without needing to drink anything. Here's how this works. Near the start of each vision, there's a body with a note and a potion next to it. Whatever color potion is there is the sanity draining one, and that also tells you which of the effects are associated with the other colors. For instance, if the red potion is the sanity draining one, the blue potion will always be the sanity restoring one. You can use a weak aura that we'll have in the description below to help track this, you simply click on the color of the potion next to that dead body, and it'll fill in which color has which effect. You have to decide for yourself whether it's worth drinking the buff potions. They can help you, but you also need to make sure that they don't fall off, or else you could get disoriented or slowed or stunned in a bad situation. No matter what, you should always be on the lookout for the Sanity Restoring Potion, as it gives you 100 sanity, which is a massive chunk, given that you'll have between 500 and 575 sanity, depending on your tech tree. Patch 8.3 also bought some special food buffs that only work in Horrific Visions. These can be made using questionable meat, and they can also be bought and sold on the auction house. I believe the most powerful of these to be the Ghastly Goulash, which restores 2% health per second. 
This is a huge amount of HPS that doesn't show up on healing meters, by the way, uh, and can allow you to pull without worry of dying to auto attacks. You can also eat a Baked Void Fin for a 20% movement speed increase, or Dubious Delight for a 20% reduction on incoming crowd control, but you can only pick one of these effects because it is a well-fed buff. Grilled Nasher is a special food that turns you into a Kathir, effectively giving you a slightly worse version of stealth until you get into combat. This can be very useful as well, but again, it's mutually exclusive with the other well-fed options. Finally, there are kebabs, which will not interfere with your food buff, and they can be eaten once every three minutes. After you spend 10 seconds eating one of these, you'll restore 100 sanity. This can be quite powerful, but it's best if you use it in the zones that drain less sanity, as the 10 seconds of sitting down to eat will be less costly there. And you do need to be careful if you try to eat while below 50% sanity, as a horrific figment could spawn and get you into combat. You can also bring almost any consumable that you can think of, and you should. Health potions, combat potions, flasks, augment runes, these are all usable. One consumable that's immensely helpful to have on hand is the Drainic Living Action Potion. This can be used while stunned, and it breaks you out of the stun and makes you immune to any further stuns for the next 3 seconds. You can also bring drums if you're not a class with a bloodlust effect. Most of the time, you can drums a boss early and then have it for Thrall or Illyria at the end of the run, so consider this in your pathing, as you may want to head for the boss you find hardest first in order to have drums for it and Thrall or Illyria. You also get three Sanity Restoration Orbs per run, split among your entire group if you're playing with friends. These instantly revive anyone who needs it, and restore your sanity up to full while you stand inside their aura. They also make you immune to Madness effect while the orb lasts. To make the best use of these for efficiency, you'll want to use an orb and then pull some trash enemies into it, remaining in its aura until it expires. However, you often don't need to be hyper-efficient, and may instead want to use your three orbs to give you some safety against difficult bosses. Another very powerful effect is the Gift of the Titans proc, unlocked from your tech tree, uh, which is heavily recommended to have before attempting a 5 mask full clear. This is a 20 second buff on a 60 second internal cooldown, which you can track with that comprehensive Vision Week aura linked in the description. While it's active, you are immune to sanity loss, and you can just ignore many boss mechanics and focus on damage. It's triggered by killing enemies, and though it's not guaranteed, it's very likely that you'll get it pretty quickly if you're killing things and it's off of its internal cooldown. For this reason, you can use that cooldown in your decision making to make it very likely you'll have it up for the hardest bosses that have otherwise unavoidable or very hard to avoid sanity drain. Alright, let's move on to Orgrimmar and Stormwind themselves. Both cities have some powerful buffs that you can earn in the easier zones to help boost your power for the rest of the run. There are two possible buffs in the starter area, of which exactly one will be up for any given run, and there's one potential buff in each of the two corrupted zones, the medium difficulty zones, and again, exactly one of these two zones will have a buff available in any given run. In the Valley of Strength, where you begin in Orgrimmar, either the Blacksmith or Gammon will be up. Killing the Blacksmith grants a 10% damage done increase, while killing Gammon grants 10% increased health, which can still be a damage increase if you're running Twilight Devastation or Echoing Void. The drag might contain a clickable ethereal portal inside the transmog hut. If you click on this and then kill the ethereal it summons, you'll gain 10% crit for the rest of the run. If the drag is empty, Bwemba will instead be available in the Valley of Spirits. Killing her will grant you 10% haste and movement speed, but be warned, she does a nasty 6 second polymorph with no cast time. Stormwind buffs are similar. In the Cathedral District, you can pick up 7% versatility from Mulain in a building straight ahead of where you begin the run. If that door is closed, another will be open on the northeast side of the district, with a stealthed bear spirit inside. If you kill that spirit and the following waves of spirits, you'll get a 10% haste buff. In the Dwarven District, one of the first buildings on the left may be open, with a minefield inside. If you can navigate that minefield and step on the green experimental mine at the end, you'll get a 10% damage done buff. You can then step on any of the other mines to return to the front of the building. If that door is closed, then the Trade District's bank door will be open, and you can kill the animated guild vault that's inside for a 10% crit buff. These buffs are potent, and are generally worth grabbing, as they'll make the hardest boss fights of the vision easier. Now I'm going to go over some of the tougher enemies in both Orgrimmar and Stormwind. This isn't a thorough list, but it does contain most of the enemies that have cost me runs, or at least proc my cheat death. Greater Void Elementals show up in the Valley of Spirits and the Mage Quarter, and they cast Void Buffet, which stacks a shadow damage taken increase. 
They also always appear next to enemies that cast Shadow Damaging Abilities on you. This can be very dangerous if you're not prepared for it, but the biggest thing that'll kill you is your own Corruption drawbacks, as those are Shadow Damage too. In Orgrimmar, there are enemies called Kathir Dominators, while in Stormwind, they're disguised as SI7 Informants. These enemies cast an ability called Touch of the Abyss, which is a 5 second stun. Interrupt this, stun them, immune it, or be ready to use Drainic Living Action Potions to break out of the stun if you're going to die in it. Now I'll cover some Orgrimmar specific stuff. The miniboss Void Crazed Hulk can be nasty. It'll pick you up and throw you without a cast bar, and that comes with Sanity Drain, and then it'll jump after you. If it lands on you, it'll drain even more sanity. This is a very good mini-boss to get a Gift of the Titans proc and then pull. Inquisitor Nashal, <laughs> I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, in the drag, does a nasty Void Torrent cast. You can run really far away or behind the tree stump to dodge it, but you can also get right in the middle of its hitbox and it won't hit you. His shield explosion is also a little weird. Its damage scales with how much is left on the shield, but for some reason the sanity drain of the ability does not scale. Uh, and the Sanity Drain is also not increased by the Faceless Mask of the Daredevil, so you don't need to worry too much about DPSing through it the whole way. This is also true for Thrall's version of the ability. In the Valley of Honor, there are a lot of annoying enemies that stack a poison on you. If that poison reaches 5 stacks, you'll get stunned. And if you're in combat with the Akir Mindhunter miniboss when you do, you'll also lose Sanity. However, it's possible to skip this entire section after killing Misha by mounting up and running through the side of the area. This is outside of the main pathway, so you'll take heavy ticking damage while doing the run, and it contains one tricky section where you'll need to have the correct angle, but it can save a tremendous amount of time. Be ready with a health stone or a health potion as you reach the end of this run, and you can pre-pop a defensive cooldown before mounting up and starting the run. You do need to watch out for split personality spawns, and if you're below 50% sanity and leaden foot is active, then you should also wait until after you've killed a horrific figment before starting your journey, or one may spawn on you and start stacking that slow. Rexar is one of the scariest bosses in Orgrimmar, as he summons boars as you damage him, and they chain cast a sanity drain on you. A few different strategies work here. You can damage Rexar slowly and then hard swap to each boar to ensure you don't get overwhelmed by multiple at once, or you can intentionally spawn a few and then AoE them down and use AoE interrupt effects if your spec has them. You can also wait until Gift of the Titans is off cooldown to pull Rexar, and then hopefully get a proc off of the first or second boar, allowing you to ignore the others and DPS Rexar down with impunity. In all zones in Orgrimmar, there are totems that spawn after you kill the boss that can teleport you to the start of the vision. While midair, you can even click off any of the 5 minute buffs that are close to expiring without incurring their drawback. There are portals that do a similar job in Stormwind. Thrall himself is another good fight to have a gift proc ready for. You can also use an orb and pull him and cleave down his boars while standing in the Sanity Restore aura, making you effectively immune to their Sanity Drain for a while, and then once it fades, you can start using your interrupts on them and finish them off. Alright, let's move on to Stormwind. Armsmaster Terrenson in the Old Town can be very tough if her abilities overlap with split personality spawns, so consider waiting to pull her until you get a Gift of the Titans proc, or until a split personality happens and you know there won't be one for a while at the start of the fight. If you have a gift ready to be procced, there are some neutral rat critters that can trigger it on the ground near her. These things are all over Stormwind, and they can be used in the other zones too. Matthias Shaw, the boss of the Old Town, is also one where bad overlaps can be deadly with split personality. The main mechanic of this fight is the eyes, which you need to avoid looking at. Slow and considered movement is key here. Often what you'll want to do is move a few yards forward, and then Shaw will be attacking you from behind, and then you can backpedal a few steps, and Shaw will be in front of you, but the eyes will still be behind you. Inquisitor Darkspeak in the Trade District can be surprisingly lethal. He channels Agonizing Torment, which drains quite a bit of sanity if not interrupted, and you don't have enough interrupts to stop it from going off if you're playing solo. After one or two casts of this, he'll cast Convert, which makes your abilities damage your allies and vice versa. This can be very bad in a group run, but even in solo runs, it can be lethal, as it also makes you immune to all healing for 30 seconds or until you drop combat. Save cooldowns and ideally set up a gift proc for this enemy, so you can ignore the Agonizing Torment casts and kill it before it casts Convert. The Crawling Corruption mini-boss in the Mage Quarter can be very tough, especially with either Split Personality or Leaden Foot active. 
A gift of the Titans proc or an orb into this enemy make it much easier, but if you find yourself without either, you'll need to move very carefully. If Leaden Foot is active, focus on small movements and never let Leaden Foot stack above four or five. If Split Personality is active, pause for a bit right before it spawns, even if that means taking a hit from a Swirly, as getting disoriented is far more costly. Magister Umbric in a solo run will be almost impossible to fully interrupt. Generally, it's a good idea to orb into this boss, allow the first Entropic Missiles through, and then kick the Polymorph. Then you phase him, and continue to allow Missiles through and kick Polymorphs. If you're confident you can push him fast enough, you can kick Missiles, but Polymorphs going through can often be quite bad. You can interrupt his Frozen Storm channel if you can get a pet, a totem, or some other unit next to him. Just be careful, because sometimes you'll want to wait until your interrupt is off cooldown to stop his channel. If Leaden Foot is active while you're trying to cross his room, move in Stutter Steps and avoid going over 4 or 5 stacks of the debuff. Illyria can be pretty annoying, especially if you're a melee spec. The number one priority is to make sure you don't get polymorphed, so always have a plan to get back to her and interrupt her if she starts casting that. If she's in a bad spot, you can make her move to you by getting out of her line of sight behind a pillar, but sometimes she'll just decide to cast a chain of abilities for 10 seconds in a row and not move. Be warned that the Polymorph ignores line of sight. One neat trick on this boss, is, and, and actually the one in the Dwarven District too, uh, is the time bombs they drop can be punted away if you right-click on them, and they can also be Typhooned or any kind of displacement ability will move them too before they explode. That's all for the Method 5 Mask Horrific Vision Guide. I've tried to include all the important stuff I could think of, but if there's something awesome you do that I didn't mention, put it in the comments below. If you want more Horrific Vision content, Subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ratnose, and be sure to like this video if it's helped you out, and remember to subscribe to the Method YouTube channel here too. Thanks everybody for watching, I'll see you in the next one.